Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Ice Finger of Death. This footage was captured by the BBC off the coast of Antarctica. A creepy, twisting column of ice reaches down to the sea floor and then begins to spread out, killing every living thing it touches. You can see it here just wiping out a whole colony of unwitting crabs. It's caused by new sea ice forming at the surface of the water that is so salty it begins to sink and freeze. This is called a brinicle. Now, at first, it baffled scientists and scared people who saw the footage, with some people calling it slow lightning and wondering if larger versions could form that could actually threaten humans. For now though, scientists are continuing to unpick this fascinating mystery and study the ice fingers of death. Moving on to the night now, we have the Millennium Falcon. In June 2011, a scan of the ocean floor near Sweden and Finland revealed something very strange. It looked, and there's no other way to say this, like the Millennium Falcon spaceship from Star Wars. Don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. It was found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, and scientists were absolutely baffled. In the absence of any real answers, people just started coming up with their own theories, which ranged from a simple rock formation to a crashed UFO. Eventually, a team from Ocean X went down there to investigate. At first, they thought it was just a stone cliff, but as they approached it, they realized it was more in the shape of a giant mushroom with rounded sides and rugged edges. It had an egg shaped hole at the top, as well as strange circles formations that look like small fireplaces. They were even covered in something that looked like soot. The team concluded that it must be a natural formation, but they don't understand how it was formed, especially because no volcanic activity has ever been reported in the Baltic Sea. Do any of you have any good theories? Next up at number 8 now, we have the underwater pyramid. A few years ago, a huge anomaly was found off the west coast of Mexico. To many people, it looked like a pyramid, but deep underwater. Now, of course, this caused an explosion online among UFO enthusiasts who believed it to be an ancient relic of an alien civilization. It was first spotted by UFO enthusiast Marcelo Igazusta, who was using Google Earth to search for signs of global UFO activity. Now, to this day, you can still use his coordinates to go and see that feature on Google Earth. It's thought to be about 11 miles across, which would make it about 10 times the size of the Great Pyramid of Cholula, the largest known pyramid structure on the planet to date. The area is a hotbed of volcanic activity, and the feature may very well be a product of that, but this hasn't stopped the UFO enthusiasts searching for more answers. Moving on to number 7 now, we have the underwater rivers. In Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula lies a very interesting phenomenon, underwater rivers, and they look like this. But how exactly does this happen? Well, basically, when a limestone bedrock collapses, it sinks and forms a pit. This creates a reservoir that then fills up with a mixture of fresh and groundwater and salt water. Finally, when organic matter ends up in there and decomposes, it produces hydrogen sulfide, which separates the fresh water at the top from the seawater below. Now, all of this understanding is quite a recent thing. To the first divers that saw this, it simply looked like an underwater river. Next up at number 6 now, we have the Milky Sea. For centuries, sailors who have been out to the most distant parts of the ocean kept reporting a mysterious phenomenon all over the world. the Milky Sea, miles and miles of pale, milky, glowing water. When they returned, many people didn't believe them or thought they were just mistaken. But in the modern era, sailors are still reporting it. Finally, in 2005, a group of scientists led by Dr. Stephen Miller of the Naval Research Laboratory in Monterey, California, decided to investigate. They studied reported cases and found that on at least one occasion, there was a bioluminescent bacteria in the water known as Vibrio harvei. In order for now, in order for them to cause the effects that have been described, they would have to congregate in massive numbers, and that is still very much a mystery. There are theories out there, but the Milk Sea story is not over yet. And I think that's really cool. Moving on to number five now, we have Pavlo Petri. This is an ancient Greek city, thought to be over 5,000 years old. In 1000 BC, an earthquake resulted in the entire city being swallowed up by the sea. The area never re emerged again, and so it has been relatively well preserved. Entire roads, houses, gardens, temples, and cemeteries are almost as they were the day they were flooded. In 2009, scientists used sonar mapping techniques developed by the military to make Pavlo Petri the first submerged town to be digitally surveyed in 3D. Now, scientists have a big task ahead of them to figure out 
who these people were, what their lives were like, and where did they go when their homes sunk beneath the waves. Next up at number 4 now, we have the giant squid. For centuries, sailors told tales of the Kraken, an impossibly big squid-like creature that lived at the bottom of the ocean, only servicing to smash up ships and drag sailors down to their watery graves. Although the Kraken has now fallen into folklore, a very real creature may have taken its place, the giant squid. It can grow up to 55 feet long and was never even photographed alive until 2004. Scientists know very little about this creature. They don't know its daily behavior patterns. They don't know whether it comes to the surface or remains deep at the bottom of the ocean all of the time. They don't know how fast it can swim, whether it uses its tentacles to catch prey. They don't even know what it eats or how long they live for. The giant squid may prove to be one of the last mysteries of the ocean, forever lurking below the depths of human knowledge. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the immortal jellyfish. Some humans search for immortality. One species may already have the answer to that. The scientific name for this jellyfish is Turritopsis dorni. Its nickname is the immortal jellyfish. Just like every other living thing, it ages except when it comes to the point where it should start dying, the immortal jellyfish just says, nah. It then reverts back to its sexually immature stage, essentially becoming a child again. Their tentacles retract, their bodies shrink, and they sink to the ocean floor to start their whole cycle all over again. Now, scientists still aren't sure about how the jellyfish are able to do this. That's one reason to study them. Another is that if we find out how they're doing this, we could use it to fight old age diseases in humans, or maybe even figure out immortality for ourselves. Do you think that's a good idea though? At the number two spot now, we have the purple orb. In 2016, the team operating the exploration vessel Nautilus came across a strange purple orb on the ocean floor off the coast of California, and it appeared to be alive. The scientists were stumped. They had never seen anything like it before. They joked about it being a spider egg sac or a tiny mama octopus. They even nicknamed it Blobus Purpleus, and they weren't the only ones who were interested in it. A crab was there too. The crab was just knocking this purple blob around, and the team had to basically prize it from its claws to retrieve it. After taking it back to a lab to study, scientists were very puzzled as to what exactly it was. After analyzing it though, they believed it to be a variant of a sea slug. A purple orb sea slug. And finally number one now, we have the bloop. In 1997, the bloop sound was heard deep underwater in the Pacific by multiple listening stations that were thousands of miles apart. Take a listen to the famous bloop. What was that? It was a total mystery. What made the bloop sound? Theories started to arise. Many believed that it was made by a massive, unknown animal that had been awoken at the bottom of the ocean. But what could make a noise that loud? After studying the noise, NOAA, the research group, had determined that the noise wasn't made by an animal, but rather a natural event instead. They believed that it was the cracking of an ice shelf breaking up in Antarctica that sent sound waves right through the Pacific. Now, of course, even to this day, Day, there's a hardcore group of people that still believe the bloop was definitely animal made. Kicking off the list at number 10, living fossils. Also referred to as crinoids, but living fossils sounds way better, definitely. These little guys went extinct 273 million years ago, or at least so we thought. We found these dudes this past year, and they're these non skeletal corals. They're cousins to starfish and sea urchins, but I gotta admit, they don't look nearly as cool. Starfish are the coolest, they're OGs. Discovered on the Pacific Ocean floor, this type of coral will attach itself to the stem of Japanese sea lily, and then they just become one over time. Any type of ocean life that undergoes symbiosis, that creeps me right out. I don't like barnacles. I have a fear of the ocean, and I'm super glad that we're doing this list. So let's move on as I get goosebumps. Oh, I hate this. Thalassophobia, I think, is like a fear of deep water. I have that. I also have a fear of shallow water. I can't swim. Number nine, Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was Japan's main base during the war, but come 1944, the United States launched an attack, what some deem is Japan's Pearl Harbor, where 60 ships were sunk and around 250 planes went down. So for 70 years, there's been a massive graveyard sitting in the Pacific, and it wasn't until recently where we got a good look at these haunting artifacts. A photographer by the name of Super Jolly went down and did the dirty work for us. He called this shoot one of the scariest dives he's ever done in his entire life. 
life. They describe the atmosphere filled with human skulls, gas masks, and bullets as haunting. Yeah, you don't say. Nobody was expecting these artifacts to be that well preserved after all this time. That's the terrifying thing here. Photos are even still intact. You can see people's family members just sitting at the bottom. How sad is that? It's a haunting reminder of naval warfare, and also humans mostly suck. Number eight, MV Derbyshire. This ship was twice the size of the Titanic, but James Cameron didn't make a movie about it, so let me fill you in with less of a budget. MV Derbyshire was the biggest British registered merchant ship of all time to go down. That's an odd brag, but hear me out. She was assembled in 1976, but lost in 1980 on route from Canada to Japan. A Mayday distress call was never issued, and it was following proper ocean routes with weather routing companies, so they were doing all the right things. What happened? September 15th, 1980, a search began for the missing ship and crew, but six days later, the search was called off. Nothing was found. The ship was declared lost. The system the ship of the Derbyshire ended up sinking as well later on in 1986 due to deck cracking. So the families urged officials to search again for answers. Come 1994, the Derbyshire was found. Number seven, Garbage Island. There's a lot of treasure in the sea, but there's also lots of garbage because humans suck. Sorry. I mean, look at the top of the Pacific for the example, not even below it, but right on the surface, we have something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's located safely in the North Pacific subtropical gyre. There's basically four of these large systems, which are just massive swirling ocean currents moving warm and cool water about. They're whirlpools of garbage now. No wonder aliens don't want to come. They're like, no, this looks like Let's just go to that planet. A plastic bag, for example, was found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. We now have the deepest piece of trash. Kind of hard for Ariel to sing under the sea when she's got a plastic bag wrapped around her head. This great patch is larger than you think. It's more than twice the size of Texas. It's grown up to 60,000 square miles. Please recycle. Number six, Yanaguni Monument. This structure was discovered in the 80s near Yanaguni Island in Japan, and the claim is that this is an ancient city, or it was long ago. It's 160 feet long and 65 feet wide, and we're pretty torn over this one. Some think it's man-made, with the lines being so straight that it looks like paths were literally carved out. And I mean, to be fair, that looks like a little staircase. If this was on land, I'd be climbing all over it. I'd think it was made on purpose, some ancient jungle gym. But the fact that it's so deep underwater makes us think that it was a natural formation, obviously. No one's going down there like pickaxing, holding their breath. The footage of it is pretty incredible. If I were to come across this, there's no way I would believe that it's all natural. What do you guys think? Number five holes. If you have trypophobia, you may want to look away for this next one. I have it, but I have a job to do, so I'll suffer. Off the coast of Big Sur, California, a survey revealed about 15,000 holes, and they're all roughly the same size. They all measure up to about 11 meters wide and one meter deep. The team at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute found 15,000 of these, and then they found 5,000 more that are even bigger. The little guys are micro depressions and the big ones are called pockmarks. Initially, scientists thought methane under the sea floor was coming out to say hello and then they left a crater. Rovers went down there, tests were done, no methane. In fact, there hasn't even been any activity for 50,000 years. These craters are doing a pretty good job though when it comes to the ecosystem. Now there's deep sea creatures just living in them without paying rent, how rude. They even found a whale skull just laying in one. Imagine being a crab and coming home to that. Number four, USS Nevada. Deemed the unsinkable ship, and for good reason, the USS Nevada was lost in 1948, and it wasn't until a year ago where she was seen again. Unsinkable ship that sunk. What's, what's going on here? Well, during the 1941 surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Nevada was the only battleship to get away in one piece, but barely. They barely got away. It took years of repairs, but she finally returned to battle in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion. A year later, it assisted the invasions of Okinawa and Iwo Jima, and then two atomic bomb tests were performed, and then post-World War II, she was finally deemed too ancient for service. So the Navy used the USS Nevada as target practice, and it took five whole days and lots of power to finally sink it. A torpedo was the final strike. And after it sank, the Navy wasn't really sure where exactly it would end up. It was more than 15,000 feet below the surface, so it could have gone literally anywhere. Hence why we can't find anything else on this list. You get it. Cut to last year, May 2020, a joint expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc. led by Dr. James Delgado found her. Just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. It took a little while, but we got gotcha. you. Number three. 
Amelia Earhart. Yeah, you heard me, Amelia Earhart. The first woman to fly across the Atlantic was well on her way to setting even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared somewhere over the Pacific in 1937. It's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart is, but we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 on the Pacific island of Nikumaroro. The initial examination of these remains were reported to be that of a man, that was the general idea in 1941, but come 2018, however, we now have a different idea. Science got better, our ideas got smarter. Researcher Richard Johns took another look at these lost remains, and since those days, we've learned more about Amelia Earhart. Photos have surfaced since, so now he's comparing the bone measurements to her body type, and they're actually pretty sure that that's our missing aviator. And that we had her the whole time, and we just didn't know. Number two, the Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle is located in the Pacific, obviously, as are most of these, and it's like the evil sister of the Bermuda Triangle. And just like that triangle, this one also takes the blame for disappearing ships and planes, and apparently UFOs are flying about of course. It's referred to as the Devil Sea. These names are so scary sounding. Like, I don't know, change the names and maybe it won't be spooky anymore. Just an idea. There have been UFO sightings, magnetic anomalies, planes and ships vanish. In 1945, for example, a Mitsubishi A6M0 went missing and the pilot's distress call said the sky is opening up. Then they disappeared. 1955, a Japanese ship named the Shinyo Maru lost radio contact and it didn't take long for the New York Times to coin the term the Devil Sea. All these spooky triangles are ocean currents to blame or is there something truly paranormal about the Devil's Triangle? Let us know in the comments down below. See Illuminati confirmed. And finally, number one, crop circles. We'll finish this list off with a cute one, I guess. Although I'm arguing this is still pretty terrifying. Crop circles on the ocean floor, aliens confirmed. They were first spotted back in 1995 off the southern coast of Japan, and for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers. Nobody knew where they were coming from. They would just be there one week and then gone the next. Tiny aliens or tiny puffer fish. That's right, in 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest but most cute things I've ever seen. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in the ladies by making art. Yeah, some birds dance like crazy with their weird mouth looking wing things. Some fish make art, I don't know, deal with it. Animals are the thing that baffles me, concerns me if anything, is that the puffer fish uses a shell, like he uses a tool to carve out his emotions. Check this out. Number 10, Socotra Island. Socotra Island has been surrounded by mysteries and myths since the time it was discovered. Between the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, the legends of the island date back all the way to ancient times. The reason it's so often spoken about is due to the strange abnormalities on the island. It's weird, and people like that stuff. That's why you're here. It is full of flora and fauna that don't exist anywhere else in the world. One of the most iconic trees is something called the dragon's blood tree. It kind of looks like somebody took like a evergreen tree and like shh gathered all the pins and needles to the top and it's all veiny, it's so weird. Mysterious mists and bleach white sand flow over the isolated island in ways no one can explain. The island is also host to a wealthy collection of spiders, no thank you, reptiles and birds, many of which are native and endemic to the island. It certainly is like no other place on earth with many secrets still yet untold. Number nine, Siphonophore. We know that there are some pretty gnarly creatures that live in the big blue and adding to that list, we have the Siphonophore. For. This creature was discovered 2,000 feet below the Indian Ocean by a robot exploring a canyon. At first glance, it kind of looks like a piece of trash, maybe like a toilet brush attached to like a plastic bag or several. It has many working parts, all with a different job. It can even glow if it wants to. Some parts of its body can catch prey, digest food, reproduce, and others, of course, swim. Busy dudes. They can grow up to lengths of 40 meters, which is longer than a blue whale, which, by the way, is Earth's biggest animal. However, in terms of width, it's only about as wide as a broomstick. What's even crazier is that in 2020, the year when the world shut down, scientists still discovered the longest version, 150 meters, making it the longest creature ever discovered. Number eight, Mahabalipuram. The early life of Mahabalipuram is shrouded in mystery. Though it was once part of the Pallava dynasty that ruled over part of southern India between the 3rd and 9th centuries AD. But prior to this, legends allude to the first king Bali, Mahabali, sacrificed himself to the fifth abbot 
avatar of Vishnu, after which he became enlightened. Based on discoveries made by excavators, this spot was really active in the trade of goods and other artifacts, even having trade with the Romans. It was a hub of culture, art, and literature full of thriving life. One of the biggest attractions was a complex series of temples called the Seven Pagodas of Mahabalipuram. However, today, only one of the seven can still be seen as the others are submerged underwater. Other legends say that the god Indra became jealous of the architectural elegance and caused flooding in order to submerge the city, which may very well be the reason it's beneath the waves today, due to the wrath of the gods. Number 7. A Mysterious Chest Where'd my scarf go? It's in the chest, it's in the ocean. Beneath the waves and the swells of the Indian Ocean, there is a mysterious chest that could contain treasure for all humanity, or evil. Who knows? Underwater snaps of the chest show that it belongs to a cargo ship from the 1800s. The trunk was discovered during a search for the missing MH370 flight that went missing, but they found two shipwrecks instead, so they are like, wow, shipwrecks, not people. At first they got really excited when they came across the debris field thinking that they had finally found the missing craft. But then they found out they were pirate ships and they were like, wow, exciting. Even more mysterious though is that the WA Maritime Museum has no records of the ships, thinking that it may have been a ship lost at sea and everybody died on board. However, whatever is in the chest remains to be seen and the search for the missing plane continues. Number six, the oldest tsunami victims. Over a thousand years ago on the east coast of Africa, there was a Swahili fishing village bustling and busy along their day. But then all of a sudden, a tsunami devastated the village. Based on findings published in National Geographic revealed a macabre discovery. They found a site in Tanzania that is the first and oldest tsunami deposit bearing human remains found in East Africa. The oldest human remains in a tsunami deposit was also found in the Indian Ocean just across the way in Papua New Guinea and is 7,000 years old. However, this tsunami doesn't appear to have been that big. But I mean, a tsunami is a tsunami, you know? It's a big deal, either way. But because the people lived so close to the ocean and they were on the other side of it, they would have had no warning. No earthquake to hear that it was coming. So, poor guys. Number five, the lost city of Krishna. For all the Atlantis fans out there, sadly it wasn't that. But just because it wasn't doesn't mean it wasn't, I don't know, cool. In my opinion, it's cooler because it's real. For a long time, people in India considered Laura Krishna's city of Dwarka a myth, until all of a sudden, it wasn't. Indian scientists finally discovered the lost city had been submerged off the northwestern coast of India. It is now one of the best studied underwater sites and has become a famous attraction. It is even considered one of the four dharmas, a sacred place of pilgrimage and worship. Lord Krishna founded the holy city and numerous stone structures still remain. Research suggests that it used to be the busiest port town before it sunk beneath the waves over four to five thousand years ago. Number four, the Gondwana pieces. A mysterious ancient continent called Gondwana was discovered in the Indian Ocean and scientists were stoked. It was an ancient supercontinent formed over 500 million years ago. It broke up about 180 million years ago into the land masses that make up Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, the Indian subcontinent, and the Arabian Peninsula. Researchers are only discovering that there were microcontinents beneath basalt rocks when they found fossils. They were like, whoa, wait, animals used to live here? What is this thing? This discovery could mean that previously established beliefs about how the plate tectonics broke apart could be shattered, just like the continent was over hundreds of millions of years ago. Number three, a transformer. I feel like the ocean is a perfect spot for aliens to vacation. You know, like why not? Tons of scenery, plenty of food, opportunity to pull pranks on humans. Why the heck not? It's perfect. So when this was discovered, everyone was shocked, except for me, because I don't know if I can be surprised on this channel anymore. When a new species turns up, the first thing the world says, it's aliens! But this very well may be a new creature in the crazy world that lives beneath the waves. However, you have to admit the footage is pretty bizarre. It looks like a creature is literally transforming itself 3,700 feet below. Check out this clip. At 45 seconds in, it just looks like it's having a grand old time floating, like wee. I'm going down. And then at 1 minute and 28 seconds in, it completely flips over and these little stripes of light reflect on its head. To me, it kind of looks like they are machine lights. It becomes more active and starts swimming around the craft almost as if it's teasing them. I don't know, friends. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. New octopus or alien friend? 
both. Number two, Diego Garcia. Now I know this wasn't technically recovered, but it sure is terrifying. The island of Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean has a murky and mystery past that the CIA doesn't like to talk about. It may have been their secret prison where they tormented their captives. The US government has persistently denied claims that it operated a secret war on terror within the confines of the island. But that wouldn't be the first time or last time they lied about something. A Swiss senator by the name of Dick Marty was the one who produced a detailed report alleging the torment that happened on the island. Marty told the European Parliament, We have received concurring confirmations that United States agencies have used Diego Garcia, which is the international legal responsibility of the UK, in the processing of high value detainees. Processing was in quotations, so you can only imagine what that was hinting at. Number one, a mysterious glow. The Milky Sea has been a phenomenon for ages, but as of yet, no one has quite been able to explain it. Jules Verne even wrote about the Milky Sea in his famous novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The legend of the Milky Sea became just that when sailors would come in from sailing. They'd be like, whoa, did you check out this weird sea that we came across? It was crazy. But they'd be like, dude, you're nuts. Even in modern times, scientists dismissed it because the level of bacteria needed to create that would be colossal and they considered that impossible. Yet it exists. Essentially, it's a glowing part of the Indian Ocean with an unknown source which remains under debate. The leading theory is that it has to do with large collective of bioluminescent fish plankton hanging about. The reason it was proven was that Steve Miller checked a British merchant vessel that reported seeing it in January 25th, 1995. And I quote, On a clear moonless night while 150 nautical miles east of the Somalian coast, a whitish glow was observed on the horizon and after 15 minutes of steaming the ship was completely surrounded by a sea of milky white color it appeared as though the ship was sailing over a field of snow or gliding over the clouds miller used the defense meteorological satellite program dmsp and its polar orbiting satellites to detect this ethereal event he matched the coordinates recorded by the ship to the date and then he found it when he actually just waited and watched for it the glowing spot spanned 15400 kilometers of glowing indian ocean for three nights in January. At number 10, we have an octopus nursery. Eight legged alien looking things with suction cups all over their arms and beaks for mouths. Octopus are creepy looking things, and to top it all off, they can camouflage like a Navy SEAL and they are super smart. If these are the kind of things that make your skin crawl, then just running into one of these guys would probably freak you out. Well, on the underwater expedition at the Davidson Seamount, there was a rather shocking discovery. They had a remote probe that was on the ocean floor around 10,000 feet and they came across which seemed to be an octopus that was next to not just one, not just two, but a group of 1,000 octopuses in a nursery. They were all there laying their eggs and using the heat from the volcanic vent to keep them warm. I would hate to be the guy who accidentally steps into that crack and then gets devoured by thousands of sticky arms. But if you're at 10,000 feet underwater, you probably are already screwed. At number nine, we have the Siberian Lake Monster. Monster. Of course, if we're doing a list of scary things that live underwater, we have to throw a giant mysterious sea monster on here. What separates the Siberian lake monster from other more popular guys that we have seen like Loch Ness and that kind of stuff is that underwater scans have actually picked this guy up. This thing is deep in Lake Labinkure and some radar has shown that it looks like a 33 foot long creature is living there. Now this is probably just a skeleton, but if this thing is dead, it means that there was once a giant man-eating monster in this lake. I thought we were supposed to be safe in freshwater. They've nicknamed this thing the devil, so you know he's a good time and loves company. So next time you go up to the cottage and you're swimming in the water and you feel safe, remember there might be a giant monster lurking underneath the water ready to turn you into a side dish. At number eight, we have the blue hole. Now there are several blue holes in the world. There's one in Belize, there's one in the Red Sea, there's a giant one in my heart that was left there from when Reboot ended on a cliffhanger. How are you going to end a show that so many people fell in love with on a cliffhanger. I will never trust again. Well, this one is between Cape Verde and the Caribbean islands. Scientists are really confused about this thing. It's a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor and it's several thousand miles long. What's strange about this is there's no explanation of how this happened. It might have been tectonic plates 
moving around, but when this happened the earth will probably start to repair itself and there's been no sign of this. My theory is this is where Godzilla goes to sleep at night. I mean it seems like the most logical answer. It's either that or the gateway to hell. Like come on guys, I'm doing real science work here. At number 7 we have the Yanaguni complex. This was discovered by scuba divers in the 1980s. I think that's the scariest part about this one. Could you imagine going scuba diving back in the 80s? The technology back then must have been a tube going up to some guy who would blast fresh air down to you using a bicycle pump. I don't even think they had decompression sickness figured out back then. The chances of you coming up the bends was probably super high. Well if it wasn't for a few divers in Japan who were willing to sacrifice it all to look at some cool stuff, we wouldn't know anything about the Yanaguni complex. It's still a mystery as to what this thing is. It looks like some temples that might have existed thousands of years ago, but when the ice age decided to melt it would have covered this entire area. This could be why an entire civilization got plunged underwater. Or the temple could have been on a cliff and then when a massive earthquake hit it knocked the temple into the water. But like everything in life there are some haters who say this whole thing is just a natural rock formation. Some people just want to ruin everything. At number 6 we have Anacora Sista Twista. One of the reasons why the underwater world is such a mystery is because we find things like this in there. Sure there are beautiful things down there like bright fish and chubby marine mammals, but there's also the unknown unidentified organisms like Anacora Sista Twista, which should be the name of an 80s hair metal band. But what is this thing? Well it's a protist. And what is a protist you may ask? Well it's an organism that doesn't belong to any animal group, fungus or plant group. What does that mean? I really have no idea you guys. I think it means it could be an alien. Some alien came down to earth for a swim and then scraped its knee on some coral and now we have alien creatures running around the ocean. Probably waiting for you to pee so it can swim up your pee hole and then work its way into your brain. It's really the only logical answer. At number 5 we have the Bimini Road. How were the pyramids made? Was it aliens coming down to share their technology and secrets with us? Or was it just thousands upon thousands of slaves who sacrificed their lives and their spines to build them? Well we don't know and we may never know, but the Bimini Road is another one of these mysteries. It's off the coast of the Bahamas and it looks like it could have been a pathway that was placed perfectly with giant slabs of rock. Similar to the way the pyramids were made, it seems that these large slabs of rock were too large to be moved by man and also like the pyramids, these giant slabs were also perfectly placed so well. So where does everyone's mind go when something like this happens? Well, magic or aliens. The logical answer is that this is a natural phenomenon of the water moving and hitting the rocks to make these formations. But people think that this was made using advanced technology from aliens and could have been the road to Atlantis. Honestly, I like the Atlantis theory much better. It's more fun. At number 4 we have Colossal Squid. Yeah this thing is a big no thanks for me. So everyone always talks about how there might be sea monsters out there. But this thing actually exists. There's never been one caught alive, but several have washed onto shores dead. And they are massive. The largest one ever discovered was 45 feet long and it was dead. So you know there was an even bigger one out there that killed this guy. They don't even have suckers on their tentacles, they have hooks. Let me say that again. This squid has 10 giant arms covered in hooks. This thing is straight out of a horror movie. Scientists aren't even sure what something this big eats. They think it probably feeds on whales or your deepest darkest fears. I wouldn't be surprised if the colossal squid works part time as a gatekeeper for hell. It makes me think that the old Greek stories about the kraken might have been real. At number 3 we have underwater circles. Giant formations of circles that are formed underwater and nobody knows how they got there. These mysteries were discovered off the coast of North Carolina, Florida and Belize. Now what are they? Like many things on this list, myself and the entire scientific community have no idea. But here are some theories. Maybe they were formed naturally by either two things, water currents or some sort of animal mating ritual. Another idea is that these things were made by ancient civilizations before the ice age. All these things would have been above ground and might have been art left over by some old timey tribes. And the third theory is that they look kind of like a bullseye so it might be some sort of nuclear missile target and if you hit it hard enough the explosion will cause some sort of major natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami or if we're lucky both. At number 2 we have Megalodon. If you have a fear of sharks you're gonna love this one. Megalodon was a prehistoric shark that was even bigger than the giant hook tentacle beast that was earlier on this list. If you've already forgotten about the colossal squid it clocked in at around 
around 45 feet long, where Megalodon was closer to 60 feet long. It was a 60 foot shark that could probably rip a blue whale in half in one bite. Well, maybe not that, but it was still a gargantuan creature with teeth the size of Brock Lesnar's fists. This thing wouldn't even chew you, it would just swallow you whole and then fart your skeleton out into the dark cold ocean. At number one on our list, we have Giant Eyeball. A mysterious giant eyeball washed onto the shore of a Florida beach back in October of 2012. I don't know any other kind of giant eyeball other than a mysterious one. There's no super common regular giant eyeball just lying around. But this is also Florida. This is the state where people smoke crack at weddings and kiss alligators on the lips. So maybe it's a little more common over there. Well, this giant eyeball was found by Gino Cavacci and he didn't know what the hell to make of it, so he took it home and then stuck it in his freezer. Then he called the cops and the cops came in and told him, we don't do giant eyeballs on the beach. You have to call the wildlife people. And then he called the wildlife people and they were like, what the hell is that? And he was like, I don't know. I brought it to you guys to try and figure out what it is. And then some people were like, maybe it's a sea monster. And other people were like, no, it's probably from a marlin. And I think in the end, no no one really knew what the hell it was. But just so you know, there's giant eyeballs out there just laying around the beach sometime. Starting off this countdown, we have the HMS Sea Serpent. In August of 1848, the crew on the HMS Daedalus was sailing in the South Atlantic when they spotted this terrifying creature. According to the ship's captain and several members of the crew, they claimed that the monster was 60 feet in length with four feet of his head raising out of the water. This massive sea beast lurked around the ship for 20 minutes before taking off. To this day, we don't know what it is that they saw. They described it as being a long snake with a dragon's head. Pretty weird and creepy, right? Well, they aren't the only ones who witnessed this too. It was spotted a second time by the American Brig Daphne. And in fact, crew on board even shot at it. Scientists claim that maybe they just saw a whale. But come on, a bunch of experienced sailors would know the difference between a whale and something that's not a whale. And at number nine today, we have the Mary Celeste. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. To this day, the mysterious case of the Mary Celeste is considered one of the creepiest cases in nautical history. Basically, in 1872, the Mary Celeste was found abandoned in the middle of choppy waters. The crew was nowhere to be found. All the cargo on board remained untouched. Now, the lifeboats were missing, which makes people believe that the crew tried to get off the ship and flee. But why would they just abandon their ship like that? Well, we got a number of theories. One, a sea monster got them. Two, a pirate takeover occurred. Three, they were abducted by aliens, or four, they consumed bad food and they all went mad. I know, it seems wild. To make matters weirder though, the crew and lifeboats were never found. No one knows what happened aboard that ship. In our eighth spot, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, a group of divers went out looking for treasure in the Baltic Sea, and they came across something weird. It was a 70 meter long weird object laying 300 feet below sea level. This thing has since been named the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and no one knows what the heck it is. It's just this massive steel looking structure shaped like a disc with some weird patterns on it. Gets weirder when the divers claim their equipment randomly stopped working when they got closer to the object. There was a massive electrical interference there. So what is this thing? Honestly, we don't know. But some people think it's a glacial deposit left from thawing glaciers. Or it's part of a UFO spacecraft from one extreme to another. Could be either or, who knows. In our seventh spot, we have the three men. In 2007, three Australian men headed out on an expedition together. Three days later, their ship was found drifting by itself in the middle of the ocean. The men were nowhere to be found. That's not all. On the ship, they found knives all over the cabin floor, as if there had been a fight and people were scrambling for weapons. What happened to these men still remains a mystery to this day. But of course, we got the theories. One is that they got into a devastating fight and they all ended up dying. Or two, their propeller became snarled in a fishing line. One dude went to go free the line, but then fell into the ocean. The second dude tried to save him and then fell in as well, and then so on with the third guy, or who even knows. Okay, we don't know for sure, that's just a theory. The only thing we do know is that this case is pretty creepy. Moving on to number six, we have the Kraken. So it may just be that the Kraken is real. 
but it's not what we think it is. In fact, the legend of the Kraken was thought to have been born after a number of sailors spotted giant squids while sailing. So the Kraken might actually just be giant squids. In 1870, a giant squid washed up in New Zealand. Legend goes that it was as tall as the top of a ship's main mast. And it could easily take over a ship by wrapping its tentacles around the hull and crushing it. Is this true? Who knows? But no one believed that giant squids were real until around 2005. That's when scientists caught a photo of one. Then in 2013, they got a video of one. Now they believe there are millions of giant squids out there. The mystery here is, what beast did the sailors encounter in 1870? Was it a ginormous squid, or was it a kraken, or is a squid a kraken? Who even knows, okay? There's just so many questions out there that we need answers to. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed shipwreck. Back in the early 2000s, a natural gas company was laying pipeline in the ocean when they came across a shipwreck. Nowadays, this shipwreck is considered cursed or haunted. Let me explain why. So after the shipwreck was discovered, a team was sent down there to check it out. But everything that could go wrong did. First, the exploration sub malfunctioned right as it was getting ready to explore the wreck. Then the Navy sent a research sub down there and it literally self-destructed upon entering the water. Then over the course of a couple of years, other attempts have been made to explore the ship, but those have gone wrong as well. None have been successful. So now it's believed that this ship is cursed and doesn't want anyone entering it. In our fourth spot, we have the disappearing submarines. In 1968, four different submarines all mysteriously went missing. As a result, people believe that this can no way just be a coincidence. Something was out there sinking these subs. The subs were the USS Scorpion, the Soviet submarine K-129, a French submarine Minerve, and the INS Dakar. In fact, the French sub and the INS Dakar disappeared only four days apart. The French submarine has still never been found. What's weird is that it disappeared only an hour away from its port. So you think they'd be able to track it down, but nope. So what are the odds that four massive submarines go missing the exact same year? What could have caused this? We'll probably never know. In our third spot, we have Sylvester Butler Jr. Apparently a number of people mysteriously vanish off of cruise ships each year. Most of them have never been found. Today, let's look at the weird case of Sylvester Butler Jr. In May of 2017, Sylvester boarded a cruise ship headed to the Pacific Islands. While on board though, the crew noticed he was acting weird. He kept to himself, barely talked to anyone else, and housekeeping claimed that he never unpacked his bags. The only charge on his bill was the occasional soft drink he would order to his room. Also, every time the cruise made a stop, he never left the ship. Then somewhere between Fiji and the final port Sydney, crew noticed that he was missing. No one knows what happened to him. And the ship's CCTV footage revealed nothing. It's sad, but theory goes that Butler jumped off the ship and took his own life. Apparently he suffered from a chronic genetic kidney disease. So maybe he wanted to end his suffering, but we don't know for sure. On top of that, I believe that his body was never found. Coming in our second spot today, we have the Stronse Beast. The Stronse Beast is the name given to a massive carcass that washed ashore on Stronse Island on September of 1808. At first, people thought it was just the body of a shark, but this creature had paws instead of fins. So then people were hella confused. Not only that, but it was 55 feet long. But part of its tail was missing, so clearly this thing was even bigger than that. This beast was described as follows, and I quote, its flesh was described as being like coarse, ill-colored beef, entirely covered with fat and tallow, and without the least resemblance or affinity to fish. The skin, which was gray colored and had an elastic texture, was said to be about two inches thick in parts." End quote. Not only that, but its bristles glowed in the dark when wet, and the contents in its stomach were red. So what is this beast? The Natural History Society of Edinburgh believes that it is a sea serpent of some sorts. Maybe the Loch Ness Monster or its long-lost brother, who knows. And 
And in our number one spot today, we have the Oorang Madon. So this next mystery is pretty freaking creepy, I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna keep you up at night. So in 1947, two American ships received a distress call from the ship the Oorang Madon. The SOS call was from a crew member that stated everyone on board the ship had died. Then all of a sudden, his SOS ended with his last message being, I die. When the ships arrived, they found the ship completely unharmed. The entire crew, including a dog on board, had died. Everyone had a terrified look plastered on their face. No one knows what happened to the ship. Theory goes though that maybe they were exposed to some dangerous gas and died. That seems to be the most common theory out there. In our number 10 spot today, we have the upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that includes what kinds of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation, it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep, and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal, with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound, or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here is a clip of that sound played at 20 times the original speed. It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but considering the fact that this has yet to be proven, I am here to ask the question, what if it's not? In our number 9 spot today we have Bermija. Bermija was an island that could be found on many maps, spanning from the 16th to the 20th century, but in a 1997 survey, the island could not be located. In an extensive 2009 study, it was concluded that the island that was once labeled as Bermija just didn't exist, which left a whole host Host of questions. The island was supposed to be located just off of the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is particularly important because if it did exist, its location would be integral to determining the boundaries for exploitation rights of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. So of course when this island that's been included on many maps seemingly just doesn't exist anymore, people really began to speculate what could have happened. There are a few major theories with this one. The first is that the original observation of the island was incorrect and then no one ever went to double check that this island existed. The next being that possible shifts in the geography of the ocean floor, along with rising sea levels, were the cause for this island to completely disappear. The third theory is the most mysterious out of them all, and this is the theory that the island was blown up by the CIA so as to expand the economic zone belonging to the United States. It certainly is not an easy thing for an island to just disappear, so it truly is quite a large mystery about what exactly happened here. And at this point, it is unclear if we'll ever know for sure. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Sarah Joe. The Sarah Joe was a fishing boat that departed from Maui in February of 1979. There were five crew members aboard the boat, and when they left around 10 a.m. that day, the skies were perfectly clear, but while they were out at sea, the wind began to change and they ended up encountering a horrible storm. People on shore who were rightfully worried about the crew headed to the shoreline to try and wave the boat back in, but they were unable to locate the the boat at all. One of the passengers fathers even went out on a separate boat in the middle of the storm to try and see if anything could be done or if he could at least locate the ship, but to no avail. It was presumed that all of the crew members had been lost due to the severity of the storm. The following days of course consisted of many hours of searching, but neither the ship or any of the men were located. Flash forward almost an entire decade to September of 1988, and a member of the initial search team, John Naughton, was on a wild life expedition on a deserted atoll around 2,000 miles from Maui when he discovered a small boat and a makeshift grave. He left the site as untouched as he could and immediately contacted authorities who were then able to confirm that the boat was the Sarah Joe and the person buried in the makeshift grave was one of the passengers who went missing all those years ago. While experts do agree that the boat could have drifted here and it would have only taken about three months to do so, this area was surveyed in 1985 and there was no trace of either the boat or the makeshift grave. So where would the boat and this crew member have been from the 1979 disappearance until after the 1985 survey? These are the types of questions that still remain unanswered to this day. There are of course theories, but none that cover all the mysteries this story holds. 
In our number 7 spot today we have the Yonaguni Monument. Just off of the coast of Yonaguni in Japan there is a diving location that has a high population of hammerhead sharks, making it a large and popular attraction. In 1986 a diver in the area noticed some formation on the seabed that resembled a structure of some sort. This led to a team of scientists going on a dive to gather more information and this is when the Yonaguni Monument was officially discovered. The monument is made of sandstone and mudstones, but here's the mysterious thing. Scientists can't agree on its origins. There are some who believe that this is a natural formation, but there are some who swear that it is man-made. The stairs are over 165 feet long and 65 feet wide, which obviously means that they are strikingly huge. There are pretty reasonable arguments for both sides, and considering the fact that this thing is at least 10,000 years old, I guess it's fair that we may not have all the answers, but it certainly is strange that we can't quite figure it out. At the end of the day, I really don't want to meet whatever thing would need stairs this large. In our number 6 spot today we have the Milky Sea Phenomenon. This phenomenon is certainly much more beautiful than the name would suggest, and while we kind of know what causes it, there are still many, many unanswered questions that surround it. The first recorded sighting of this phenomenon occurred in 1846 when Raphael Semmes, who was the captain of the CSS Alabama, spotted it and was horrified by what he was seeing. He wrote, From the deep blue water into a patch of water so light it startled me. The whole face of nature seemed changed and with a little stretch of the imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. This phenomenon is so bright that it can be seen from the satellites orbiting Earth, and while it looks amazing in pictures, I can only imagine how frightening it would be to see in person when little is known about why it happens. It is believed that the glow is caused by bioluminescent bacteria that grows in all oceans in our world, but in order to produce a glow like we've seen, this bacteria has to be multiplied by billions of trillions, and we don't know how or why this happens. Also, we don't know for sure if that is what is responsible for the glow, it's just our current best guess. Just for the sake of our expansive imaginations, let's say that it really is this bacteria causing the glow. Why does it come to the ocean surface? Why in such great numbers? Every time this happens, it's at unpredictable times, locations, and sizes, so basically, it remains a strange but stunning ocean mystery. In our number 5 spot today we have the SS Beichimo. The SS Beichimo was built in Sweden in 1914 and it belonged to the Hudson's Bay Company. This ship was used to trade provisions for pelts in Inuit settlements along the northwest territories of Canada. On October 1st 1931 the ship was ending its trading run and was packed with fur when it became trapped in pack ice. The crew decided to briefly abandon the ship and they traveled over the ice to the nearest town for shelter. Because of the location and the time it wasn't exactly going to be simple for everyone to be rescued. On October 15th, the Hudson's Bay Company sent an aircraft to save 22 of the members, but 15 remained and began to prepare in case they needed to stay the winter. Because the ship couldn't be heated, the remaining crew members would return to the ship every few days to chip away some of the ice, but also to grab essential items from the ship. On November 24th, there was a powerful storm, and once it had cleared, the Beichima was gone. The remaining crew assumed that it had sunk, but this is really where our mystery gets started. An Inuk hunter spotted the ship around 72 miles from the camp the remaining crew members had set up, and somehow they ended up locating it, removing the rest of the valuables, and then abandoning it for the last time because it was believed that this ship wouldn't last the rest of the winter. After the rest of the crew was finally rescued, the ship ended up being spotted around 480 miles from its previous sighting. For 40 years after, the Beichima was frequently spotted floating in different locations, sometimes even providing people with shelter during storms, but was never once captured. In 2006, the Alaskan government began to work on a project to find the Beichimo, but since the most previous sighting, she has never been located again. While the ship is now presumed sunken, it would have been the longest sailing ghost ship of all time. Ships rarely survive for nearly as long while being unmanned, especially in the crushing icy waters. We still haven't found the wreck of this ship either, so perhaps it is still out there floating somewhere. In our number 4 spot, today we have the Devil's Sea. The Devil's Sea is like the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific as it lies in the region just south of Tokyo. This area is often thought as some sort of a paranormal area because of the consistent horrible happenings that occur in it. This area is one of the 12 vile vortices in the world, with the Bermuda Triangle being the most famous one. Above the Devil's Sea, planes are known to seemingly just drop out of the sky like something is reaching up and grabbing them. Methane deposits cause large
large explosions in the area, and during World War II, this area was the site of over 20 missing submarines. There have also been numerous ships, some twice the size of the Titanic, who have gone missing without a trace after sailing through the Devil Sea. This is all to say that while we don't really know what lurks in this area, it's probably safest to just stay the heck away from it. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Cassie Nicole. The Cassie Nicole was a boat that set sail from Richmond Hill, Georgia on April 10th, 1990 with four people on board. During the second day aboard, one of the passengers realized that the boat was suddenly taking on water, and at this same time, the pumps and radio were not working, which left them with little to no options. The crew decided it was time to board a life raft and abandon ship. After a day of floating on this life raft, one of the passengers named Nathan saw the ship's hatch cover floating by them and thought that it might be able to support him better. Once he hopped onto the cover, he ended up losing sight of the other three crew members. Later in the day, he saw a freighter go by multiple times and he was hoping that it had picked up the three crew members he had lost contact with. After three days of floating at sea, Nathan was finally rescued, but he received the news that the other crew members hadn't been found. Months went by with no sign of the others until a few months later when Nathan's sister, as well as the owner of the boat, began receiving strange phone calls from someone who was speaking in Spanish. The person on the other line said their name as well as the names of the missing people, and in the final phone call the stranger said, in English, I'm bringing them home, but there has still never been a sign of them. The family of the disappeared men believe that they may be alive somewhere but are being held in a foreign country, but why? And why would someone say that they were bringing them home only to not do that? In our number 2 spot today we have the loneliest whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's a male or a female, or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. The whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 50 2 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it's just left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly is going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles, and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how could we possibly know for sure? In our number 1 spot today we have the French Sailors. Yves Emmanuel Payne and Laurent Hernas were French sailors who were hired to sail a boat to its new owners. Their trip would see them departing from Annapolis, Maryland and heading to Guadalupe, but when they never arrived at their destination, searches quickly began. Unlike many of the other stories similar to this one, there were actually sightings of this ship, most of them occurring along the intercoastal waterway which was far off from the course the ship was intended to take. Along with these sightings came the frightening news that the witnesses claimed to see a third man on the boat which made people begin to believe that it had been hijacked, which wouldn't have been all that surprising considering the state of the art vessel they were on. Despite these sightings, the boat was never found and neither were the men. To add even more strange occurrences to this story however, around two months after the disappearance, a police officer in South Carolina pulled over a speeding car. After a sort of strange encounter with those in the vehicle, it was later discovered that two of the three men in the car were the missing Yves Emmanuel and Laurent, but at this point, they of course had already been released. What exactly happened here has never been fully discovered, despite this all happening in 1991. Were the sailors kidnapped? Were they part of an elaborate plan to steal the ship, despite their loved ones saying that they would never do such a thing? It all remains a mystery. Starting off this countdown, we have the giant cannibal shark. Sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. Honestly, maybe it is. So in 2003, scientists tagged a nine foot long great white shark. They did this in order to study the temperature changes in the ocean. Here's the thing. Several months later, the tag washed up on shore. The shark, nowhere to be seen. They checked the information on the tag and that's when they were shocked. About four months after the tag was put on the shark, it dove to around 1900 feet. They believe that's because the shark was attacked and eaten by something. But what creature in the ocean is going around eating a 9 foot long bright white shark? They still don't know. It 
could be a massive sea creature that we haven't found yet. Or they think it might be an even bigger shark, making it a massive cannibal shark. If you're not afraid of the ocean yet, then this for sure has done it for you. Coming in at number nine, we have the lost city of Atlantis. There's a city that lies sunken underwater just off the coast of the Japanese island Yonaguni, making it Japan's very own Atlantis. Many people believe that the city is around 5,000 years old. There are complete pyramids, ruins of castles, structures etched with faces, and rock sculptures that look like animals all underwater. It's theorized that a terrible earthquake caused the city to be engulfed by water. But to this day, we don't know the true origins of this mysterious underwater city. Conspiracy theorists believe that the CIA destroyed this island in order to expand America's economic zone. Unless we travel back in time, there's no way to find out more about the city and what happened to it. Coming in at number eight, we have Carol A. Deering, aka the ghost ship of the Outer Banks. So on January 31st, 1921, the Carol A. Deering was found abandoned off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. The crew was nowhere to be found. On top of that, tons of stuff was missing from the ship including the crew's personal belongings, life rafts, logbooks, and navigational equipment. To this day, no one knows what happened to the crew aboard the ship. But of course, we got some theories. Theory one is that a mutiny occurred. Theory two is that they were ransacked by pirates. Theory three is that they were taking part in rum running. People stole the ship to use for the rum running. And when they were done, they just abandoned the ship and left it there. But like I said before, we don't know for sure. In our seventh spot, we have the electronic fog. Okay, this one is pretty weird, not gonna lie. So on December 4th, 1970, a man named Rob McGregor was flying over the Bermuda Triangle when he was met by this weird tunnel-shaped vortex. He entered it and apparently his wings sounded like they were scraping along metal. All of the electronic and magnetic navigational instruments malfunctioned. When he looked up, all he saw was a dull gray fog. Also, there were strange clouds forming behind the airplane. They were only in the clouds for a couple of minutes, but claimed that they traveled for 40 minutes. When they got out of the fog, they were over Miami Beach, a flight that would have taken 75 minutes. He believes that this weird fog is what has caused other planes and boats and passengers to disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. So what is this weird electronic fog that he encountered while over the ocean? That's something I want to know. In our sixth spot today, we have the time travel. Legend goes that one day, three ships were traveling through the Bermuda Triangle. Everything was going fine until they encountered a mysterious fog. When they emerged through the other end of the fog, there were only two ships. The other ship was way ahead of them. The crew aboard the ship claimed that the fog transported them back in time several years. There, they saw a bunch of different boats and passengers also sailing. Then they approached the same fog and they got transported back to the current day. Isn't that weird? Was this the same fog the pilot encountered? Like, what is going on in the ocean? We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the disappearance of Keith Davis. Now, this case is certainly going to keep you up at night, so just a little warning. So in 2015, Keith Davis, a fisheries observer, headed out to sea with his crew. His job was to monitor all the catches and collect data on it. But about a month later, Keith disappeared off the ship in the middle of the day, in broad daylight. He has never been found. On top of that, the weather that day was calm, and he was an experienced observer. So it's not like he just fell overboard by accident. So what happened to him? Well, theory goes that he knew too much, so someone got rid of him. When police searched his email, they found photographic evidence of illegal things happening on board these ships, like they were allegedly smuggling people. He was also keeping track of a number of rule violations. Not only that, a year before his disappearance, Keith sent a mysterious email to his friends. In the email was a video of four men being shot to death while holding onto debris in the ocean. So theory goes that Keith was killed for knowing way too much. But still, to this day, we don't know exactly what happened to him. Coming in at number four, we have the Ellen Austin. In 1880, a ship named the Ellen Austin set sail to New York from Liverpool. During their travels, the crew spotted a ship floating near the Bermuda Triangle. They approached it and found that nothing was wrong with the ship, but all the crew on board were missing. So they decided to put some of their own crew members on board this mysterious ship and have it come with them. But during the trip, the two ships got separated. 
They were separated for a couple of days before the Ellen Austin spotted the ship once again. However, all their crew on board vanished. There was no trace of them. Now the story goes on saying that they placed another set of crew members aboard the ship and once again the exact same thing happened to those men. They disappeared off the ship without a trace. But that account hasn't been confirmed. Either way, this mystery gave birth to an urban legend. Basically, a cursed ghost ship lurks the waters near the Bermuda Triangle. Those who hop on board will mysteriously disappear without a trace. In our third spot, we have the disappearing aircrafts. In 1945, five torpedo bomber planes took off for a three-hour exercise. But while flying over the Atlantic Ocean, they disappeared without a trace. It all started when the flight's leader noticed that his compass wasn't working properly. So he was worried that they were flying in the wrong direction. He instructed the planes to then change paths, thinking that they were going to then be heading towards Florida. But in reality, they were just traveling deeper into the Atlantic. As the planes started getting close to the Bermuda Triangle, their signals began to fail. The last few things the pilots ever said were, and I quote, everything looks strange, even the ocean. And it looks like we are entering white water were completely lost. Then the communication was cut completely and they were never heard from again. In our second spot, we have the severed feet. What would you do if you were out on a nice stroll on the beach when you came across someone's missing arm or foot? Believe it or not, this has happened a number of times. Since 2007, severed human feet have been washing up on the shore of the Pacific Northwest. The first was a right foot still inside of a size 12 Adidas shoe. The second was again a right foot, size 12, but it was in a Reebok shoe. Since then, 15 more feet have washed up on shore. To this day, we don't know who they belong to or what happened to them, or even if they were victims of the same killer. It's really freaking creepy if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we have the witchcraft. This is the name of a boat that set sail on December 22nd, 1967. On board was the captain, Dan Burak, and his friend, Patrick Horgan. The two headed off to get a good look at Miami's Christmas lights. However, after traveling just one mile out, they contacted the Coast Guard, saying that the boat had hit something, but there was no damage. Dan seemed to be calm on the call to the Coast Guard and said they just needed a tow to the shore. So they figured that the boat's propeller was just damaged or something like that. The Coast Guard immediately went out, but when he arrived at the spot the boat was said to be, no one was there. It took him only 19 minutes to get there, yet the boat was already gone. Here's where it gets super weird. This boat was virtually unsinkable. Not only did they have life jackets and lifeboats on board, but the boat had a special flotation device installed in it. This made it basically unsinkable. So even if the boat started filling with water, part of it would still be sticking out of the water so the Coast Guard would be able to see it. And also they had flare guns on board with them. So if something serious started to happen, they could have set those off. They didn't. The boat and the two friends on board just disappeared without a trace and to this day have never been found. Mm -hmm. 